Do you think, for example, that homosexuality is disgusting? Absolutely. Do you think that homosexuality should be loathed? Absolutely. Do you think it is right for people to have a physical disgust towards homosexuality? Absolutely. Does it make you nauseous? Yes. Are, do you think it's something that is shamefully wicked and vile? Yes, of course it is. Right. It's an abomination. How much stronger a word can one use to, to uh, clarify what uh, homosexu homosexuality is? Robinson was quoting the Bible. Leviticus 20 verse 13 puts it like this. If a man also lie with mankind as he lieth with a woman, both of them have committed an abomination. As Iris Robinson may well know, the same section of Leviticus also has an opinion on adultery. In chapter 20, verse 10, adultery is condemned in equally strong terms. Do you really enjoy living a life that's so hateful? Cause there's a whole way your soul should be you losing control of it. And it's really distasteful. The Lock Keepers Inn by the River Lagan. Up and running just 16 months, it turned over almost a quarter of a million pounds in its first year. Last month, the cafe was honored in a competition for young entrepreneurs. On the face of it, this was a stunning achievement for this man, Kirk McCambly. He founded the business, securing a lease from Castlereagh Borough Council in 2008 and has established it as a successful going concern. It is all the more remarkable because Kirk McCambly did all this without much business experience and with little money of his own. So just how were these obstacles overcome? The answer is Iris Robinson. She was not present the night of the awards dinner, but she could take credit for the entire enterprise. Well, I think you're just evil. You're just some racist who can't tie my laces Your point of view is medieval at the cafe that autumn of 2008, the relationship between Iris Robinson and the man almost 40 years her junior ran aground. It ended with acrimony on her part, as she told Selwyn Black. It seems cruel, but I am not going to soften until he has paid back the 45,000 and he has got until Christmas. Now that the relationship was over, Iris Robinson decided she wanted the money paid back. But did money suddenly become an issue? Yes, it did indeed. The pair would meet only a handful of more times. A text in December 2008 announced the formal end. Just cut links with Kirk. God's word was very clear on it. He is reasonably okay. I am not. Another text from the same period spells out her feelings. Everything is a reminder wherever I go. My home, my church, my car, my music, and of course, the roads we drove. People looking on. I mean, the Robinsons, for example, are going to accuse you of, of absolute betrayal. They're going to say that here you were, you were uh, 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 privy to her, to Iris Robinson's innermost thoughts, her feelings, and here you are now betraying them. I feel that they have betrayed my trust. I was employed for a particular role. My position was abused. 
my trust was abused and their trust in the people who elected them in a collective sense was being abused. I felt so angry that I had been sucked in, drawn into that situation. Now I feel sorry for her, I feel sorry for Peter, I feel sorry for their personal circumstances. But it doesn't negate that they both knew the consequences of what they had been involved in and did nothing to address that circumstance. It goes right to the heart of the credibility of government in Northern Ireland.